Hi there. So next we will dive into Cubase and see how to use advanced MIDI controllers, touchscreen and uh, iPad with Cubase when creating music. So let's get going with Cubase and see how this is all coming together. Next is a decibel that is a metering solution. Uh, it's actually a VST as you can see. So it, it is a VST that you can place to any of your channels, but it also runs in, in iPad as you can see. So while you have the window closed, you still can see the metering from your iPad. And I think that's pretty handy because now I can see like from the view meter. And of course, everything is extremely hot uh, as, as, as one can see. So. Uh, I could basically create a group or 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 so, but I'll, I'll uh, to bring all these a bit down. Let's just bring them a bit down so that it doesn't hit that hard. So now you can see that I can basically do that monitoring from uh, from my iPad, and I don't need to I don't need to kind of spoil my landscape with the with the VST in 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 my computer screen or in, uh, in, in, in my screen in general. So, so this is extremely handy plugin. Also that the fact is that it has different type of metering options. So you can change the style of a metering to, to different type of meters that you can configure actually by yourself. So you can also start from scratch and create these um, automatically. So, um, so you you can you can basically like say that uh, show oh, okay let's show it into iPad one so um, so you can you can define what what is the view in your iPad and um, I usually do it so that I have for this this I have the view meter and it's it's basically in the in the beginning of my stereo channel stereo out channel so that I see what is what is basically then. What's the level of things going uh, into into my stereo out? Then I do utilize also control room, so I have I have certain I have certain metering plugins for my control room in in that sense, so that uh, I, I I can basically have have that and control that from here easily. So if I look now into inserts, uh, I have a set of uh, mit metering tools here that I have in my second display. However, in my primary like iPad, I always have the view meter in, in, in the first in, in, in stereo. And so I can see the level that the, the kind of the tracks are coming into my stereo out. And, and that way I can then um, tweak things so that they are ideal for, for the master channel and the effects in master channel. But yeah, that's a um, that's an iPad controller as well in, in a way, but it's also VST as you can see. And the name is Decibel, so it's um, I, I like it. It's a great monitoring um, tool uh, and very versatile. Of course, you can have multiple of these. So as, as you can see that I have one over here, but then I have another one as well that is not linked into an iPad. So one is pre the stereo and if one is post uh, the stereo channel. So so yeah, that's that's decibel VST monitor. Let's move on. Okay, let's look on the touch screen and um, as you can see from from here, Raven does support Cubase, but I don't have a license for it because I have recently started working with Cubase. So um, so I haven't got the license for the Raven software. And um, I already have like the fader controller like UF8 and, and things. So using Raven software with touchscreen uh, pr brings certain value, but in my case, it doesn't bring as much value if I would only have Raven and Cubase. But that, that doesn't mean that you would not be able to use um, touchscreen with your Cubase. You can actually purchase the, the UPDD commander and um, buy that 
as a license to use only touchscreen and Cubase. And here you can control different type of uh, gestures into the touchscreen using only the UBDD commander and the UBDD software. So to use touchscreen with Cubase, you don't need Raven software. Of course, it makes things a bit more easy and it brings certain things into picture that can help you with. But in order to use in, in general the, the touchscreen, you only need the UBDD driver and touchscreen. So let's look what you can do actually with, with, with the touchscreen. So you like you saw that I have programmed different type of uh, gestures here. And that's, that is again like fully customizable. So you can control and, and bring in these gestures that are like something that you use, like for example, two finger tap on the screen will play and stop. And then, for example, let's take a few examples. So if I have that clip selected and I I basically, if I have that clip selected and I rotate three fingers right, it will double that. And then if I do with two fingers, it will do an undo. So I can pretty much then select it and, and, and uh, re repeat. Then if I do like, two finger rotate left, it will mute it. But then if I do two finger rotate left, it will unmute it. Three fingers will uh, close the the, the uh, bottom of, of the screen. So if I have like a, an editor here, so if I tap three fingers, it will take the editor away. Or if I have a mix console there, um, if I do a three finger tap, it will actually move into a mix console. Here, actually, the touchscreen works pretty okay with Cubase. Um, you can you can basically easily touch things here. You can work with EQs and and all the different type of uh, channel strip controllers that you might have uh, and uh, you might want to use. Also, um, it basically works great in in menus and and so on and so forth. So that you can you can pretty much use the the console um, with the touchscreen quite straightforward. So, for example, if I would like to solo that and 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 whatever I would like to do within the console. So uh, let's stop play and 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 so so let's go here. Then also five fingers will bring in the the channel for me. So if I want to see the channel, I basically do five finger tap. But all these can be easily programmed into the UBDD driver and the UBDD controller, similarly as any other like controller. So all in all, it makes um, a workflow uh, quite nice in order to kind of to touch things and, and, and work with the touch screen. It's actually, it's quite natural. It of course first it needs the fact that you 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 start with with uh, uh, you start with the, with the fact that you are you are used to using it in in that respect so so that um, that when you are when you are basically used to use mouse it takes a, a bit of a time to kind of start practicing it in a way that you actually use the touch screen more than your mouse. And um, and at least I feel it and I, I, I kind of feel it usable in, in even with the UPDD driver uh, so that I can easily, you know, do things. I can go into a plugin, I can open that and I could also bring in a new one if I need, like, uh, let's say, like Pro C. Uh, le let's do a Pro. No. Pro Q, if I want to bring Pro Q over here, so that's again, I can easily, you know, get those um, into into my project, into my tracks and, and channels. I can, of course, work and, and bypass the inserts like from here. So all that works fluently with touchscreen. So um, definitely something to consider. At least I 
like it in, in, in my workflow to be able to touch and, and, and work with, with faders or mute buttons or whatever. So it's, it's quite, quite easy and nice. So yeah, that's with uh, touchscreen and let's move on. Alrighty, that was Cubase and how to utilize advanced MIDI controllers, iPad and touchscreen in your music production. Next we will dive into reasons, so remember to subscribe for the channel and stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching. Bye now.